Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys follow me on Twitter or Snapchat or even Facebook, you'll notice I had kept up a little bit. So a lot changed really fast. I think my life is just like that. It's either like all or nothing. So basically at the last minute, we made the decision to build a home. It's not as easy as it sounds. You kind of have to get out from the home that you're in, like sell it and remove yourself from it before you can start building your house, unless you're financially stable enough to own two homes. Unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> so we've made the choice to build our own house and we sold this home really quick and it happened like overnight. So I'm in the process of moving as we speak, like literally as we speak. <laughs> A bunch of you guys are like, oh no, you're leaving Vegas. No, I'm staying in Vegas. I am very happy in Vegas. Um, but I did get a little bit sick when I did travel to Denver too. Unfortunately, my uncle got sick. So I always make it a habit to put my family and close friends first. So that was really what started the spiral of me disappearing. Unfortunately, my uncle has, he's not my blood uncle. He was married to my aunt, whom I talk about a lot on this channel. Like, I feel like my aunt was really my main inspiration for <laughs> getting interested in paranormal and Tales from the Crypt and Elvira and... Tales from the Dark Side, all those really good, all those really good shows. Sadly, my aunt had passed away about five years ago, and my uncle is not doing the best. Um, unfortunately, he's had diabetes his whole life, and um, he's really never taken care of himself. Unfortunately, and that is free will that we have as humans, you know, to um, do what we want with our our very own capsules. So, unfortunately, um, we think he may have had a stroke or something like that. Thank you for all the well wishes. Um, he got out of the hospital, kind of went into a temporary nursing home, and then they put him back in the hospital. So unfortunately, it sounds like I'll be going back to Denver soon. But enough with the sad talk. I was so excited when I got to go to Denver. I thought, you know what? Like I've gone to Denver several times, you know, since I moved to Vegas about three years ago. And I was like, why haven't I filmed something from Denver? As you guys know, I grew up there, and so like majority of my life I was in Denver. So I went back, and so I'm going to do a really cool video on my other channel of a lot of the locations that I grew up in, which is gonna be kinda cool to show you guys. It's basically just gonna be GoPro footage of me driving around showing you guys kind of the neighborhoods that I grew up in. And then um, I did get a chance to go to a place called Red Rocks Amphitheater, and that is one of the first old school throwbacks <laughs> that I actually started my ghost hunting career in as a rebellious adolescent. So I don't have a ton of footage to show you guys. I would have loved to get up there at night. Unfortunately, they have the parks like really like high security and like it sucks because growing up in Colorado it wasn't like that bro like you could do whatever you wanted and the police were like if you want to go up to that haunted amphitheater by yourself you go for it, we're not gonna be pulling you out of there though. So first disclosure statement before I talk about Red Rocks Amphitheater, I want to state that in no way, shape, or form is it or was it ever safe um, you know, to go up and ghost hunt up there for several reasons which I will talk about. But as an adolescent, I did, you know, I was rebellious and dangerous and stupid with my friends and um, the one thing though about places when I talk about haunted Colorado is we didn't just know them at night. Like, we knew them morning, noon, and night, if that makes sense. So we would go hiking in some of these locations, like daytime and nighttime, so we knew it like the back of our hand. 
Um, so when I talk about these places, this is no way me like promoting you guys to go. They're extremely dangerous. People have died ghost hunting. People have died just hiking in these places. So I'm just going to say right now, just because I talk about this doesn't mean I'm promoting you guys to go up there and go ghost hunting at night. I'm not talking about the apparitions being dangerous. I'm talking about a lot of places in Colorado have like really high hiking trails and if you're up there at night it's completely pitch black. You're in the middle of nature, there is no you know, night lights, driving like on street road lights, nothing like that. It's completely dark. The only reason my friends and I would do this was we knew it so well on all times of the day. So now that that's out of the way, do not go film anything and tag me in your video and be like, hey Crystal, you're so right. Like Red Rocks is so haunted. I went up there and accidentally like fell down into a cavern or something. I'm gonna be like, well, that was stupid. You probably shouldn't have done that. So there's several urban legends, okay? That's what makes up a good ghost story, right? Like, is the urban legends, the creepy stories. I'm gonna try to not get carried away and spiral off into some, you know, everyone, like, they'll attach more to it, like, as generations go along. So I'm gonna try to stick to the basics of the haunted story behind Red Rocks Amphitheater because there are several parts that connect um, Red Rocks being a haunted location. Now, one thing I will state about Red Rocks, if you haven't been there, you should go. Like, if you're there visiting, or if you live there and you're new to Colorado, or if you're just not familiar, it's like your backyard. Like, if you're in the Denver metro area, I will state that I grew up in Lake Hood, or <laughs> the west side, Lake Wood, um, near Golden, and Red Rocks Amphitheater is like on the edge of Morrison, Lakewood, and Golden, like kind of tucked in that corner. And what they theorize is, you know, they found a lot of dinosaur bones like throughout Colorado. So they think that, you know, it's very ancient, obviously. But Red Rocks, the theory behind the ancient um, rock formations is that it was actually completely underwater. And so these formations, it does, it looks like a giant fishbowl. Like that's the only way I can explain it, which a lot of Utah is much similar. So um, there's a lot of caverns and they think all, at one point every part of these were like underwater caverns, like where sea creatures would live and whatnot. So I think that's what makes a good history raw and authentic is what is the origination from? So the very first story I will hit regarding Red Rocks is something called the Hatchet Lady. And yes, it sounds as scary as it would be in real life. So they claim that this Hatchet Lady, um, you know, takes multiple forms, including a woman with a hatchet in her hand, um, usually wearing like a cloak or a hoodie where it's kind of disclosing her face. So you can only kind of see the outline of, um, you know, a creepy pale jaw and cheekbones. Basically, the legend is is that there was a homeless woman living in the caves at Red Rocks, which might I add, if you go on a tour of Red Rocks, they'll be like, oh, there's three or four. No, there's a lot. So no one really knows which cavern was hers because some you have to hike into, some you have to hike up into. And I mean, these formations are gigantic, so you wouldn't want to just hike without any sort of experience. This woman was homeless, she was living in some of the caverns, and they think that at some point during one of the winters she passed away. And so basically she haunts the park. The biggest thing that she haunts is, this used to be like a really big makeout spot, you know, like if you were in high school or anything else, and if you go out there with your boyfriend or girlfriend to, you know, feel being scared, um, even if you're walking around or sitting in your car, she will come up to the windows, bang on the windows and basically scare you and she will manifest herself with some sort of a hatchet in her hand. A lot of people claim that when they've gone into these caverns or the correct one like sort of cave that they will hear footsteps running at them like ferociously um, with like a woman screaming and you know like they, they'll claim they see the shine like the shimmer of an axe because obviously if you're up there at night you would have a flashlight, so if you were to accidentally, you know, catch something, it would be like a shimmery axe or something shimmery silver like like a hatchet. So a lot of people claim that her um, motive is to catch you um, while you're running and then she wants to dismember you. So of course it's like, oh, have you ever experienced this? I haven't been obviously dismembered or anything. I don't know anyone that's been dismembered. 
But um, I have experienced hearing footsteps or someone running towards me. Um, I used to go to Red Rocks all the time. It was like one of the funnest memories I have as a teenager with some of my high school friends going up there. And honestly, like the adrenaline just from being at Red Rocks at night, which I don't think you can really access it at night anymore, but the adrenaline because it is this huge, you know, like fishbowl area that just goes on and on forever and hiking and it's scary because it is pitch black. It almost sits kind of like in a valley, like behind um, the city of Golden, behind the city of Morrison. So it's really beautiful during the day as well. Basically, anyone after dark that experiences this woman, the legend has it, you will disappear. Um, I don't think that's the case. If you ask my opinion, since I have experienced her energy, I don't think that she wants to kill anybody. I don't think she wants to dismember anyone. I think that she is well aware of what her presence has become. I've talked about this before. Callie from the Stanley Hotel, she was one of the lead investigators at the Stanley Hotel. She had made up this story um, about the main office building located at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park. And the story that she started, which was not true to begin with, was that a little girl haunted the main admin building of the Stanley Hotel which sits on the premises of, you know, all of the Stanley Hotel buildings. So when she started doing tours and tours of like hundreds of people coming through, more and more people believed that a little girl haunted this, you know, area of the hotel. And pretty soon they started getting EVPs, DVPs, even like intelligent communication of a little girl, a little child haunting this building. So she almost created it in a way. It was like enough people believed in the energy of this child that it manifested a child. I can't explain it. That's, there's theories behind that. I don't want to get into that too deep. But that's my um, understanding of this woman in Red Rock. So she's called the Hatchet Lady. Um, they think she could be somewhere between the ages of 40s and 50s. Um, you know, back in the day, my family is originally from Missouri, but they moved to Colorado when my mom was about 10 to 13. So my family goes way back, you know, like my grandma knew Denver well, like this is all before Denver became what it is today. And there used to be a lot of asylums. There was a lot of asylums like any typical big city, and of course they were treated improperly. So my personal thought behind this woman is maybe she was being held against her will at an asylum. Um, you know, unfortunately they kept TB patients. They kept patients in asylums that weren't even ill. Sometimes they were like abandoned and dropped off from their families in the 20s and 30s. So my theory behind it is maybe she was an escapee from one of the asylums in Denver. Um, you know, had nowhere to take refuge and then went into the mountains and, and got as far as Red Rocks. At that time, that would have been far because there wasn't a city built onto it. And she kind of just camped out there until she died, sadly. And she would have had plenty of access if she was some sort of a survivor skill, you know, with like fire, there's animal, wild animals up there and all that stuff. So uh, that's my theory. I think that she's well aware that she scares people. And I think that so many people have put energy into her, um, you know, background and story of being the hatchet lady that it's almost made her stronger and strengthen to be able to manifest. So that is one of the legends behind Red Rocks Amphitheater. Once again, I have experienced it um, in some of the caves, in some of the areas. One thing though, if you do go up to Red Rocks, it is not by my disclosure because it's dangerous, not just a hatchet lady or like some other homeless people that could be dangerous up there and the cliffs, but there's also cougars or mountain lions and I have ran into them at Red Rocks as a kid and it is very scary and they hunt at night, like they tend to come out, they're like a little bit more nocturnal. And so we had heard what we thought was the hatchet lady and turned around as a group and it ended up being a freaking mountain lion. So I'm just gonna tell you guys to please be safe going up there because I think people forget that um, there's bears and everything in Colorado. So just please be safe. There is also theories that the hatchet lady was a resident of Morrison who kind of did some sort of weird escape um, from like young love or, or a broken heart. Um, and I think that her name was like Carol or Sil Carol, something, some old school name. Um, but no one can determine really where she came from, just that she is now a permanent resident for eternity at Red Rocks Amphitheater. So Red Rocks and Colorado was also known for a lot of mining, okay? So there's supposedly a 
possible miner that haunts Red Rock's amphitheater. He's about five foot five. He has some sort of a white, freely frizzy beard, what you would think of in miner clothes, like probably overalls and dirty, sooty, I guess is the word for it. And he carries some sort of bottle, like possibly a bottle of gin or something like that. Miners were always known for drinking up there. So there are kind of caverns and areas where there could have potentially been mines back in the day. And this is where it's said that you will happen to run into this apparition. They say you can hear music around him and you hear bubbly, meaning like beer or wine or something like that. So I don't think that he is an angry spirit. I think he just wants to mine there for eternity. There is something called the Trading Post that is also located at Red Rocks Amphitheater. Um, I think that it's kind of like a gift shop or like a location you can go to visit as a visitor, like a visitor center. And I do believe that there has been paranormal groups go in to actually perform investigations. They have captured EVPs, um, ghostly occurrences, you know, like in a typical workday. And I don't know exactly what it is. No one really knows what it is. They do think that there could be some sort of a out-of-worldly phenomena that is also connected, like meaning UFOs, to They'll hear really strange noises like hissing or scratching, like, um, and I'm not talking really dog form or animal form, it's almost out-of-worldly. But, and you know, they'll hear like weird like whispers in the ear and stuff, but it never really makes out some sort of an English tone, if that makes sense. Um, no one really knows what is at the trading post. Also, like I said, there's some sort of a gift shop there um, where they sell, oh, you know, like Colorado mugs and Colorado keychains and all that stuff. Some of the workers have complained of items being thrown by themselves, breaking on the floor. Um, they'll come back into work the next day and there's just a ton of broken glass or things that have fallen off of the shelves. There is obviously no, um, you know, it wasn't an employee, obviously. There's a boiler room that is also located in that basement area of the trading post. Apparently, and I've never been in there, so I do not know personally, I've never experienced this, but it's some sort of like shaking with door handles, like something's either trying to get in or out. Um, sometimes light bulbs will burst, sometimes lights will flash on and off, even if it's not a light bulb, just like random um, you know, light uh, anomalies that will basically appear. Red rocks along with the Stanley Hotel. You know, there's all this mining, but they also always find quartz and, you know, geostones and all this stuff that is implanted into the rocks. It's, you know, a theory in paranormal that um, stones, obviously, um, you know, amethyst, quartz, all that stuff can be an amplifier to attract paranormal activity or kind of give, um, you know, energy to energy that's already there and it will amplify it up and help it manifest. So that is, you know, an idea if there was mining, even if it was copper and gold, anything could be, a, you know, a magnifier for paranormal activity. Colorado is surrounded by all of that stuff. The Stanley Hotel itself sits on top of a lot of courts. And so that is a huge theory that all of the resident ghost hunters at the Stanley Hotel have claimed is that somehow the courts helps magnify the energies that are within the Stanley and make them what they are. Now, another thing that's really interesting behind Red Rocks Amphitheater is it's also surrounded by a lot of Native American land. Native Americans were huge in a huge part of Colorado. I mean, obviously my family is Cherokee um, and they had owned a lot of land in Colorado Springs um, kind of before my uh, my mother was born and before um, you know my aunt and uncle was born. The Utes, the Arapaho, the Cheyenne, and the Navajo were the most predominant within Colorado, within the realms of Colorado. So there is something really spiritual about Red Rocks Amphitheater. So even if you go and you're in Denver, and I'm not talking about ghost hunting, like they have, um, I think religious ceremony practice like on Sundays where they kind of do like um, a non-denominational thing um, Whether you you're religious or not. It's just really neat to be there for it because it is so It's more about the nature connection, you know of Red Rocks It's not really about the minister on stage or, or who you're surrounded with and, and even what you believe it is a lot deeper than that I think it's because the way Red Rocks was actually formed, if they do think it was formed underwater with these kind of rock formations, um, it was highly connected to the Native American tribes for that reason, obviously, because Native Americans are very connected to land and nature and respecting Earth, and you know, Mother Earth is kind of who they worship. They, it is a theory that there are spirits of Native Americans that are there 
um, because it's been proven, obviously, that Native Americans were a huge, um, you know, territory population to Colorado itself. And, you know, there's sightings of Native Americans there in apparition form, um, usually on top of the rocks and on top of the formations. And um, they think that the apparitions of, you know, the natives are trying to protect the land and try to keep it um, its basis of, you know, how it was formed here on Earth. And to, to try to keep it protected, it is a theory that if someone goes up there to deface rocks or deface any of the formations, that they will see apparitions of Indians and the Indians will throw stones or throw rocks at, you know, the people that are visiting because they don't want them to deface, you know, the natural beauty of what Red Rocks is. So, um, I never feel threatened or intimidated by... Native American spirits, so I never have experienced that myself. I think maybe that could be because I'm Native American, so I never have that feeling that other people get. I have had other people say that they've gone to Red Rocks, like my friends I grew up with in high school, um, that they claim they'll hear like drums in the background. I have heard that once at Red Rocks, and it's impossible because um, for a lot of people, like, you know, 10 to 20 people to get out in the middle of nowhere at Red Rocks and like actually make... Indian chants and drums, it would be impossible for them to get out there at night. They wouldn't see. There's cougars and mountain lions. There's all kinds of wildlife. So I have experienced that. Whether people are believers or non-believers, whether there are apparitions or not, you can't deny the rich history and paranormal phenomena that surrounds Red Rocks Amphitheater. If you ever get a chance to go, it is a huge part of Colorado history and I am so glad that I get to say I grew up there and that was in my backyard, like literally. I was in Lakewood and that is probably 10 to 15 minutes away. So that was one of the closest like, ghost hunting spots that I got to go to as a teen. And I did get to get some really cool footage, which I'm, I wanna show you guys now.
Have you guys ever been to Colorado? Have you guys ever gotten to visit Red Rocks Amphitheater? There's something so magical about it. I can't even describe what it is. I'm not sure if it's that you're surrounded by the natural beauty, you know, formations of nature, or maybe it is the spirits and the holiness of the Native American spirits. Who knows? Have you ever been there? Do you guys ever want to go to Colorado? Make sure you guys give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel already. Make sure you guys leave me comments below and follow me on social media. And I will catch you guys next time.